Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Welcome back to Quran 30 for 30, alhamdulillah, where we're all half asleep, just 28. Um, you know, <laughs> this is the point of the month, mashallah. So uh, everyone's eyes are half closed, but Sheikh Abdullah is wearing the smoothest fit I've seen on Quran 30 for 30 yet. Like, I don't know if Laylatul al Qadr was, you know, like you really felt it last night, mashallah. Like you came out, we, like you have this, uh, the dress of, did that come from the heavens, Sheikh? Did it descend see, upon you? See, from see, 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 let's see what he's doing. Allah must down, bro. See? I'm saying, mashallah, I'm saying, mashallah, it's beautiful. Mas okay. Jazakallah khair. I appreciate that. May Allah bless you. Sheikh Omar, make some dua for, for some muscles as well during these last few nights. <laughs> <laughs> he's going to need it. <laughs> yeah, okay. All right. I think we collectively make, need to make that dua. Yes. Yeah. Not only us, everyone yeah. watching. And listen. I work out. I just don't work out like Sheikh Abdullah. So it's like, that's not fair. You can't compare, you know. Yeah, it's all We good. don't know, actually. That's what we <laughs> <laughs> I came on here complimenting you and this, this it. you know what, man? All I can say is you don't need, you don't need um, to be able to bench 600 pounds to wield a ping pong paddle properly. Shots fired. Pop. That takes about 350 where I'm at right now, Chef. You know what I'm saying? But you got the 600 pounds. I'm not. I'm. I'm, I'm good. I'm all right. Mm -mm -mm. That's terrible. That's terrible. <laughs> well, something's gonna be coming out soon, inshallah. I don't know if you got the the, the memo. <clears throat> I, 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 I just don't. I just don't believe it anymore. I'm just. I believe it when I see it. Mm, shots fired. Even a chance. Chance. You heard that, right? Okay. Chance is there. I've been. I've been firing shots at Chance. He's been hiding the footage. Dr. Uthman was there. Dr. Uthman was doing the, 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 the Sheikh, Dana White. Sheikh Umar, I thought that he was. I thought that Sheikh Umar was being wrong. Like everybody's bullying him. I see Sheikh Abdullah. I see Sheikh Yasser Bajaz taking his parking spots. But now, when I see him firing shots in all directions, I realize that he is the uh, he's the mushagib. He's the one causing the problems. <laughs> hey, hello, Maruf. Yeah, uh, yeah. Maruf. Yeah, it's well known. It's well known. I don't know. On that note, let's introduce our guest, inshallah. So, Sheikh Ammar Shukri, alhamdulillah, my uh, beloved co host from uh, uh, After Hours, the podcast. Uh, alhamdulillah, we started um, a few months ago. Alhamdulillah, I mean, that's on uh, the the YouTube, the other YouTube channel, inshallah ta'ala, Omar Sulaiman Official, which we'll link to, inshallah. Sheikh Ammar has been, alhamdulillah, uh, the one always firing shots at me and everybody else there. But Sheikh Ammar, alhamdulillah, who. Um, What's what's your title now at Maghrib, man? It changes every year. What is it? A uh, director, <laughs> alhamdulillah. <laughs> director of Maghrib. 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 Man, this is just... Alhamdulillah. And Dr. Uthman Umarji, alhamdulillah, who is a director at Yaqeen of Research Survey Evaluation. Did I get that right, Sheikh? Pretty much. Okay. There's a survey research evaluation. There we go. We're good. There you go. Okay. Alhamdulillah, I got the words right. So all the data work, alhamdulillah. Um, Dr. Uthman runs uh, that department, but also if you've been to the Yaqeen website, make sure that you take the basic quiz, inshallah ta'ala, the religiosity quiz, alhamdulillah, to make things more precise for you. It really helps us, alhamdulillah, rabbil uh, to cater the content that is necessary for people to build their faith. Sheikh, Sheikh Uthman, tell us a little bit about it right quick, inshallah. What, what are you doing? What's going on with basic? No, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's essentially it's a tool for every individual to figure out where they're at. This kind of a self improvement tool, so you can see which aspects of your faith you're striving in, which aspects you can grow in. And then, inshallah, we can provide you with content that provides you exactly what you need for your personalized growth. So, so how do I do that for like my workout plan? Because apparently, I'm I need muscles. Apparently, apparently, I don't have muscles, Doctor Osman. My director of survey research evaluation just. Uh, said I need to work out. What do I do? What do you do? Huh? Well, go join Sheikh Abdullah's programs, man. The guy, you know, spend spend that time in the in the gym with him. Right? Let's see that 350 on camera first. Let's so get that bench. Let's get that ba that bench line uh, that, that baseline down and then we can go from there. I tried to sign up for his beast program, but it kept like the URL kept failing like just like it wouldn't let me through. I feel like Sheikh Abdullah doesn't want me to come in there. <laughs> Uh, uh, to your credit, your basketball skills, like they're solid, mashallah. So some people they're they're in the gym, but last time you know we handled business, so you're 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 good where it counts, man. Exactly. We, we, you we, saw the paid where it counts. Where it counts, yes. It's not just so, so true story. 
last time in our org wide retreat, Dr. Rathman and I were on the same team and we went undefeated that day uh, against all these youngins at Yaqeen that thought they were going to like handle us, you know, all these Gen Zers that came in like there. Everyone thinking they're Steph Curry, which is the problem with this generation, lobbing up their half court shots, you know. We were just, you know, we, we, ran fundamental we played fundamentals. <laughs> because we're fundamentalists. <laughs> I don't think that that's the basic go. rating. That's on the rating, the basic program. <laughs> so I hear. We believe in the fundamentals of Islam, right? Just to be clear, that's what we're talking Allah about. Allah. Allah. Sheikh Abdullah, do you do you want your dad joke? Or are we done? Because we've 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 had our. As a matter of fact, I've been. Yeah, you know, I just came back from a city, and I've been actually uh, appreciated for my dad jokes as opposed to other people. Um, so I have one here. Um, which one is faster? Hot or cold? No clue. Mm. Hot is faster because you can catch a cold. Uh -huh. uh, that's a good one. You get, you get that, that, that bars on Mars? That's bars, huh? That's, that's <laughs> bars for days, brother. Yeah, yeah. Something. Yes, sir. <laughs> it's something. <laughs> You know, it's, I, he said no, it's no. something. <laughs> you you actually reminded me of a joke. I was, you know, initially I was thinking like I don't know any dad jokes, but it just took a, a bad joke to trigger it in my memory. So there is uh, there's this uh, a father from Iraq who brought uh, a a purse to his daughter, and so she said, "Thanks for the bag, Dad." <laughs> oh, nice, nice, nice. I like that one. That's that a was good one, right? <laughs> That's something. It's something. Yeah, I thought you, yeah, you probably got that one from like Sheikh Kamal and Mucky, man. I called him. He didn't even I don't respond even to my call. I <laughs> no, no, don't worry. He's an equal opportuner, opportunity, not wonder. That's it's, He's consistent. Okay. <laughs> he's consistent. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. My man. Alhamdulillah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> Blessed to have you both. Alhamdulillah. Rameen, Dr. Uthman. Uh, joining us, joining us live from his dojo, alhamdulillah, um, you know, handling business, alhamdulillah. Sheikh Hamad al-Shukri, alhamdulillah, all the way from Houston, Texas. Sheikh Abdullah, alhamdulillah, with, the, with, with his Eid fit on already, alhamdulillah. Uh, but a uh, reminder to everyone in these last few days, inshallah ta'ala, please do keep us in your du'a, number one. Number two, inshallah ta'ala, we ask you to support Yaqeen bin the Nahi by clicking on the link below. And inshallah ta'ala, we're going to go ahead and get started now with just 28. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, alhamdulillah, rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulihi al-kareem wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'een. So subhanallah, just 28 is very interesting because when we talk about a Muslim worldview, literally there is a story behind every single one of these surahs and multiple stories that are encompassed. So we come out of, you know, couple of, uh, of Ajza, Surah Al-Hujurat, right, which is the surah that defines the adab that the believers are meant to have with the Prophet Sallallahu and with the community and with humanity even, SubhanAllah, it's the surah of adab that defines adab, that def defines our mannerisms. And you come into Juz 28 and there's a story that you can see yourself in no matter what. I mean, no matter where you are, there are multiple lessons from this juz that you can glean about particularly how taqwa, how that God consciousness should drive your actions. So you'll, you'll notice that most of the stories within this juz are people in bad situations that either chose taqwa or did not choose taqwa, that either chose God consciousness or did not choose it, that chose that fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or did not choose it. And because we're in Ramadan in particular, where we're supposed to be generating that taqwa, a lot of times we think of taqwa, God consciousness, only in the in the realm of you know our personal sins. But the Prophet ﷺ told us to fear Allah, to have taqwa with our families, right? To have taqwa in our dealings. Because the hardest time to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is when it is easiest to violate his commands and you have someone at your mercy and you can do what you want. Or so you think, because you don't see the immediate dunyawi consequences, the immediate worldly consequences. So what does it start off with? Surah Al-Mujadila, Khawla bin Tha'laba radiallahu ta'ala anha, being dealt with with a jahli custom, with a custom from the days of ignorance, where the husband essentially leaves his wife in a state of limbo, uh, 
with this practice called lihar. So you have this woman that's not really divorced, that's not really married, and that ends up in this terrible situation. And she comes to the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam complaining about that. And Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala reveals a surah, you know, with his name in every single ayah, SubhanAllah, which absolves her and, and in fact abrogates the practice altogether of lihar and advises us to fear Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala with our families. You have Surah Al-Hashr, which I'm not going to go into details with because Dr. Uthman, inshallah, is going to be talking about Surah Al-Hashr. But people on the inside of Medina that had an opportunity to embrace the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, but instead waited for the opportunity to violate their treaty with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and plotted against him alongside the hypocrites and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala foiled the plan. And by the way, you know, Allah's name is mentioned in every ayah in Surah Al-Mujadira. And then the most beautiful listing of his names in the Quran is at the end of Surah Al-Hashr. So talk about getting to know Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala and how that relates to your immediate circumstances. Then you have in the next surah, <clears throat> Al-Mumtahina, you have a woman who is, you know, uh, carrying the information of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam to the people of Mecca. And this is the story of Hatib radiallahu ta'ala anhu, who was seeking a middle ground because he was afraid of what would happen to him if the Fatih, if the conquest in Mecca did not go right. And so Hatib was trying to get on the good side of the Meccans because he didn't have a tribe to protect himself in case things go wrong. Again, this idea of, you know, trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, be mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make a way out for you. But a person can find themselves in that situation. And then Surah Al-Saf, which is a community of taqwa. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about the believers being united as one unit, not letting things come between them. And don't turn your hearts away the way the people of Musa alayhi salam turned their hearts away. Be like the disciples of Isa alayhi salam who stuck by his side. So be disciples of the Prophet ﷺ, united and do not let the things of this world divide you from that noble mission. So it's the Jum'ah. Don't be distracted from coming to the congregation when you are called to it as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls you to it. And the things of this world will pull you away. Fear Allah. Do not be people that stack books on your backs, but instead those that absorb the revelation and that come towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at all times. And then of course, Al-Munafiqoon, you know, which is self-explanatory. It's about the hypocrites. May Allah protect us from being hip- hypocrites. Uh, and the hypocrites most show when these situations arise, you know, where where they're given the opportunity to undermine the message and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala calls them out on it. at taghabun mutual loss, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about, um, you know, on the day of judgment, those that were betrayed by their sense of greed and the loss that they will feel on that day. So loss, true loss is on that day of judgment and then a talaq divorce, subhanAllah, when people usually fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala least in divorce. You will not find in our community a place where taqwa is most absent, like talaq, like divorce. And then Surah Al-Tahreem, where the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the, the story of of, uh, of the honey from Zainab radiallahu ta'ala anha and Aisha radiallahu anha and Hafsa radiallahu anha our mothers making a mistake out of their jealousy with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. But again, the admonishment comes down to fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to refrain from upsetting the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and from regretting uh, that mistake and tubu ilallahi tawbatan nasuha come back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sincerely. And do not rely upon, you know, who you know or who you're connected to. Tawbah becomes a very personal thing that you have to come close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with. And nothing will save you uh, if it is not the tawbah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So the stories, obviously, of Maryam alayhi salam and Asiya alayhi salam compared to the, uh, the the wives of Nuh alayhi salam and Lut alayhi salam, we have to have our own taqwa and our own sense of connection to Allah that drives all of our interactions, all of our relationships. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us taqwa across the board. Allahumma ameen. So this whole juz is shaped by how taqwa will guide you in every single situation of your life. You literally can find yourself in one or multiple of these situations in this juz at any given moment. 
in your life. And with that, inshallah, I'll turn it over to Dr. Uthman. We can start us off with uh, Dr. With, with, uh, Surah Al-Hashr, inshallah. Jazakum khair. A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Um, so yeah, I'd like to start from uh, the beginning of Surah Al-Hashr. Uh, Surah Al-Hashr, as Sheikh Omar mentioned, the last ayat are some of the most beautiful in the Qur'an. There's tremendous reward. It should be part of everyone's weird every day to recite this ayat from Hu Allahu ladhi la ilaha illahu to the end of the surah. But I want to begin with um, kind of the context around Surah Al-Hashr and kind of put it um, in context to our lives, actually. And Surah Al-Hashr was revealed during the fourth year um, after the Hijrah, during one of the most difficult times uh, in the life of this new Muslim community in Medina. And what had happened the previous years, the Muslims had lost in the Battle of, uh, of Uhud. And so the enemies of Islam, they actually got, their eyes got big and they got bold to say, look, the Muslims are vulnerable. We could attack them. Like we can attempt to really like do damage right, to, the, to Islam and, and, and the believers. And so a few incidents occurred and the strategy that the disbelievers used was unique. They realized that openly attacking the Muslims wasn't easy. So they used a tactic because they knew the Muslims love to give da'wah. So they would ask the Prophet وسلم, to send companions to us uh, to teach us about Islam. Right? We want to decide whether we want to accept Islam, so send us some teachers. So two events occurred. One it happened, it was at a place called al Rajia, where the Prophet وسلم, he sent 10 companions to teach a couple of the tribes about Islam. But when the companions got to al Rajia, um, they were actually jumped um, by a tribe called Hudayl, and all 10 of those companions, they were, they were massacred. And so shortly thereafter, again, another tribe uh, of Najd, right, a large tribe, they asked the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu can you send us a group of companions? And the Prophet, and this was a large tribe, very powerful tribe. So he sent 70 companions to teach them about Islam. And when all 70 got to a place known as Bir Ma'una, right, this well of Ma'una, that uh, again, they were attacked by numerous tribes, killing almost every single companion who was there. And so just, if we could just stop for a moment and recognize that kind of how low Right, the Muslims might have been feeling during this time. You had lost Uhud, right? You had two, a smaller massacre, and then this large massacre. And this is the buildup to Surah Al-Hashr. There was a companion uh, whose uh, his name was Amr ibn Umayya, who happened to be traveling, and he saw um, crows flying over uh, this, this well. And he goes there, and he sees that 70 companions have been massacred, right? They're bloodied bodies that are everywhere. And he eventually goes back. He wants to tell the Prophet Muhammad as what, what he's seen. And as he's on the journey, he sees two people from the tribe that were uh, from the same tribe as those who had killed the Muslims. So he tricks them and he kills them. And that's what leads up to him going to the Prophet Muhammad and, and, and not realizing they had actually uh, a promise from the Prophet to pass by safely. So they had a right of safe passage. And so when the Prophet was told as to what happened, he uh, was very, and he was he was upset. And then he said, we have to pay blood money, right, to this tribe. So he goes to the tribe of Banu Nadir. And that is what this entire surah is about, Surah Al-Hashr, the theme of it. And in fact, some scholars have mentioned that it's been mentioned as a surah of Banu Nadir as well, which is one of the large, powerful Jewish tribes in Medina. And they were very wealthy from their agriculture. They had these massive fortresses. If you go for Umrah, you can actually go and see the remnants of those fortresses as a reminder to us about those um, who deceive Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and fight the Muslims and the consequences of that. And so the Prophet, he goes to the tribe of Banu Nadir uh, and he asks them to help out in paying for the blood money. And they say, yeah, you know, yeah, Abba Qasim, you know, we'll happily, you know, help you in this regard. And the Prophet is sitting against one of the walls, right, of these fortresses outside of the homes of the, of the Jewish tribe. And the leaders of this tribe, they get together and they say, look, there's never going to be a better chance than right now to kill this man and to rid us of him. So let us get somebody to take a giant boulder on the roof, push it, let it fall on top, crush Muhammad and end him. And so the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu was given revelation that this is occurring and he leaves two miles away. He goes to the center of Medina, brings back an army and they lay siege to the tribe of Bani Nadir and the hypocrites jump in, right? Abdullah ibn Ubay and he tells the, the, the Bani Nadir leaders, don't, don't give up, don't give up. We're going to fortify it. We're going to send 2,000 soldiers. But he did not send the 2,000 soldiers. And so Allah describes what happens. He says in the second ayah in the surah, That it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has driven out uh, the disbelievers from the people of the book at this first uh, expulsion. And then he describes that what is happening on the inside of people's hearts. He says, مَا ظَنَنْتُمْ أَيَّ 
And this is really what I want to focus on in my few minutes is that the Muslims during this period of weakness during this year could not have ever fathomed that while we've been massacred twice and the enemies are getting you know, larger and they're getting more strategic right in their deception, that somehow the largest, most powerful Jewish tribe that's in the close vicinity, that the Prophet was going to be able to defeat them. And so over 26 days, ultimately, their uh, terror was cast into their hearts and they gave up. And the Prophet Muhammad asked them to leave and they had to leave with only the belongings that could fit on a camel. They left all their agriculture, they left all their weapons, and it was a manifest victory for the Muslims that required absolutely no fighting. And so Allah is saying it is He is the one who caused them to leave their tribes and leave their homes. And you, believers, meaning you would never have imagined, you never perceived that this powerful group of people would get up and walk out of their own houses. And they themselves did not ever imagine that they would leave because they thought that their fortresses would protect them from Allah. That Allah came to them in a way they never imagined and He struck terror into their hearts. They ended up destroying their own homes with their own hands and the believers completed the destruction. So Allah is saying, take notice people who have the ability to see the reality of this world or who see what occurs. And what I want to focus on again, my dear brothers and sisters, is for us to recognize our ummah is in a very um, similar place where the last couple of years especially, where I've been very tough on the ummah in the last few decades, of course, in the last millennia, where it seems as if the enemies of Islam are getting bolder and bolder and bolder, right? Just a few weeks ago, we see in Ramadan, right, the Zionists attacking Right, the, our brothers and sisters at Palestine who are worshiping in Al-Aqsa, right? And it seems like not a week goes by and you don't see bad news about some international event. But this surah is here to remind us, and it's a surah of optimism, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in complete control of the universe, and that his raw power, right, is unparalleled. And that while you might never believe and you can never perceive that with all the, the supposed unity of the disbelievers, the supposed unity, because they're not really unified, as Allah said. Allah says in the, in the same surah that you perceive their hearts are united, but they're divided actually, right? And that's because we don't see what's happening within them, right? That Allah is reminding us to, to just to have that hope in his power. The last thing I'm going to say as we come to an end is another beautiful lesson from the surah is the wealth. And we're in this last few nights of sadaqah and donations. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi the Muslims were poor during this time, very poor. Four years, my dear brothers and sisters, the Muhajirun are living with the Ansar. Imagine hosting someone for four years. And the Muhajirun are still poor. And the Prophet is saying, he goes to the leaders of the Ansar and he says, allow me, because the Prophet in the Surah, Allah says, all the spoils are for the Prophet. And he goes to Sa'd ibn Mu'adh and Sa'd ibn Abad and he says, that if you would like, we can split the spoils of war and we'll keep the same arrangement. They live with you. Or I can give all the spoils of war to the Muhajirun and they can leave your house. Look at the answer of the leaders of the Ansar. He said, Ya Rasulullah, Again, four years, they're hosting these people. You would think they'd be super excited. Okay, alhamdulillah, these guys can finally move out and get their own houses. Ya Rasulullah, right? We are happy for you to give them all the spoils of war. And we're happy that they stay with us. And this is why Allah praises them in the surah, the Ansar for this, right? So during these last few blessed nights, my dear brothers and sisters, as Allah says in the surah, The one who stay, saves you know, their soul from the stinginess of their soul, they are successful. Be charitable during these blessed days and these last few nights towards your brothers and sisters. Make dua for them and be optimistic in the power of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to rectify the affairs of the ummah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma sifun wa salamun al mursaleen. Walhamdulillah rabbil alameen. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Jazakumullah fiqh, Dr. Rahman. Jazakumullah khair. And with that, inshallah ta'ala, um, with those powerful reflections, we'll turn over to Shaykh Ammar, inshallah ta'ala. We can start us off on Surah Al Jumu'ah. Tawadah, Shaykh. Jazakumullah khair, Shaykh. Uh, Dr. Osman, one thing that I, I'd like to uh, add to the Surah Al-Hashr reflection, that beautiful reflection that you just shared, is the sequence of the names of Allah that comes at the end. And I remember researching on the topic of the names of Allah for my Maghrib course on why does this sequence have the most names of Allah that are mentioned than anywhere else in the Quran. 16 names of Allah, 1-6 uh, at the end of Surah Al-Hashr. And... One of the beautiful comments that I found in, in uh, you know, the, the Mufassirin make 
or one of them make was that it's a surah that's talking about conflict. And so for a person to become victorious in their conflicts, they have to access Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They have to access the names of Allah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَلِلَّهِ لَسْمَعَ الْحُسْنَ فَدْعُوهُ بِهَا Call upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by those names. The more a person is connected to the names of Allah, the more a person is connected to dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the more they become victorious, whether it's in communal conflicts or whether it's in their own individual conflicts in their life. And so Surah Al-Jum'ah, talking about Surah Al-Jum'ah, uh, I just want to comment on, on the, the end of Surah Al-Jum'ah, that last sequence where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually speaks about the Jum'ah prayer. And before that, I want to talk about the congregational prayer. And before that, in whatever moments I have, I want to talk about the prayer itself. The prayer Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gifted us. And Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to say, Arihna biha ya Bilal. He used to say, oh Bilal, give us comfort in this prayer. The prayer is meant to be an anchor. The prayer is meant to be a protection. The, the prayer is meant to grant you access to your greatest source of success and support. And that is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, I had uh, a year ago or maybe two years ago, I had went to the UK and when I had, they had still had a particular COVID protocol. And that was that you had to stay in a hotel for five days before you could be cleared. And so when I got to the UK and I checked into the hotel, five days in a hotel was not going to be a big problem for me at all, alhamdulillah. But they asked me if I would like to upgrade to a room with a window. And I thought that rooms with a window are pretty standard, you know. Uh, but the UK's, shout out to the UK, mashallah, may Allah bless. They... Alhamdulillah, I, I upgraded to the room with a window and it realized or I realized that in those five days that if I had had a room without a window, it would have been a very different experience. I got to see the sunrise and the sunset and there was a, a, a river and I got to see people sitting down at the boardwalk and it was just something for me to appreciate the interchanging of day and night. And otherwise, I, I honestly feel like I would have felt like I was in a prison. And it reminds me of our brothers and sisters, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala free them who are in solitary confinement. And they talk about the difficulty of not even being aware of the time around you, not being aware of the outside world around you completely. It's very, very difficult to be so disconnected. And yet the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he says that the dunya is the prison of the believer. We are in that prison collectively together. And so what becomes your window? The salah is your window. The salah is your window to the akhirah. Your salah is the window to the malakut of the heavens and the earth, the dominion of the heavens and the earth that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala controls. When you enter into the salah, you escape the dunya and you're able to see what is beyond it. And so it is an incredible gift that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us. And then when we move to salat al-jama'ah, the congregational prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has legislated, there's so many benefits that come to an individual and a community by this congregational prayer that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions a number of, of speed settings in the Quran when it comes to different actions that we undertake on a daily basis. And so when it comes to when it comes to work, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Fam shufi manakibiha wa kulu min rizqih. in Surah Al Mulk, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, He's the one who made for you the earth subservient to you so go out in its pathways just walk meshi it's to walk that's a speed setting that allah subhanahu and he says well, and seek his provision so when it comes to seeking allah's provision the speed setting is to walk and when it comes to when it comes to the remembrance of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah says wa he says Ida salati min jum ah, fas'aw ila allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says when the remembrance of allah is called to on the day of jum'ah then hasten to the remembrance of Allah. So that's a higher speed setting, that you hasten to the remembrance of Allah, the salah. And then when it comes to Jannah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَضُهَا السَّمَاتُ الْأَرْضِ Allah says, race one another. Now I'm going as fast as I can, right? I'm racing somebody else. I'm sprinting. But then there's a speed setting that's even higher than that. And that is when you are journeying to Allah himself. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَفِرُّوا إِلَى الله. Allah says, flee to Allah. When I'm racing my best friend or I'm racing a friend or what have you, there's, you know, I think I'm going all out. But if I'm running for my life, I'm running from a predator, I'm running from, then I'm going to realize that there's actually a higher gear that I can go to. And that's the gear that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala legislates or instructs us to shift to when it comes to himself. And so when it comes to the salah, salatul jama'ah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to hasten to the remembrance of Allah. 
And Salatul Jama'ah, I want to just, in the moments that I have, just share a couple of benefits to remind us. Number one is the, the beauty of the oneness of man when you walk into Salatul Jama'ah. You know, a lot of times that's the image that we mention with regards to Hajj. That when I go to Hajj, I'm standing with millions of people and we're all same and we're all the same and we're all, you know, equal in our footing and our standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But I experience that on a much smaller level every single day when I go to the masjid. When I go to the masjid and I pray with the congregation, I'm standing foot to foot, shoulder to shoulder with everybody. I'm standing. Um, I'm not being barred from the first row because of, of my socioeconomic status or what have you. I'm, I'm very much one with everybody as I'm standing in front of the Lord of all of us. And then number two, you have the beautiful uh, benefit of community, especially in a time when we're experiencing an epidemic of loneliness. You know, a, a brother beautifully told me, he said that he was missed, an elderly brother, he was missed in Salat al-Jum'ah for one week, just one week from the masjid. And he got calls from four or five different people asking him, how are you doing? Where are you? And he said, it made me feel so special. It made me feel so appreciated. It made me feel so loved. It made me feel so taken care of. The idea that we see each other every single day or at least every week or at least twice a year when it comes to the Eid Salah or the Jum'ah prayer or the daily congregational prayer that every every neighborhood has its prayer. And then uh, the last one I'll share very brief, quick, quickly is just to uh, the importance of, of obeying leadership. We're taught in the Salat al the Salat al Jama'ah congregation that when you the Imam makes a mistake, you follow the Imam in the mistake that they make, even though you say Subhanallah if he insists, right? And you learn how to follow. And uh, sometimes we blame very we, we blame the fact that we don't have good leadership, but sometimes we're just not a good flock. We don't know how to follow rules. Musa alayhi salam was a great leader, but Bani Israel wasn't the greatest flock for him. And so we have to learn as well to be better followers, and the Salah teaches us that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Zakhla Khair, Sheikh Ahmad, really appreciate it. Kamakallah for the beautiful reflections. And inshallah, to end it with that, we will uh, have Sheikh Abdullah. Inshallah, continue with Surah Jumu'ah. Salat wa Sheikh. Hayakum Allah. Bismillah wa salatu wa salamu ala Rasulillahi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala ama ba'd. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yasir li amri wa hul uqdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli ya rabbil alameen. Uh, subhanallah, when just thinking of the chapter of Hashr and, you know, Allah SWT talks about the Hashr is gathering people and then a couple of chapters later, chapter of Jumu'ah, where we are gathered together in Jama'ah for the day of gathering, which is the best day of the week. And subhanallah, within the Sharia, and I love to always talk about the Sharia, using this word for us to really embrace it and to own it, particularly when those that do not have a good, uh, good intentions towards our faith and our religion, when we understand really what the Sharia is linguistically, that has a spiritual connotation behind it and intention behind the understanding of the meaning. And the Sharia is that which is a water hole, which could be channels of water reaching one particular body of water. And that is a symbolization of when you, you know, approach that body of water or that, that place of nourishment, your soul and particularly your fitrah is nourished by that which Allah has uh, programmed for it being the Sharia. So when we look at the deen of Islam, all of it is the Sharia. All of it is what God intended for us to live by. It is the framework. What I want to talk about is at the end of this chapter of Jumu'ah, which Sheikh Ammar mentioned graciously when talking about uh, the Jama'ah and the beauty of the Salat al-Jama'ah from a communal perspective, which is part of the Sharia as well. When one prays in Jama'ah, they receive 25 to 27 blessings uh, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with the intention of meeting their brothers and sisters to where we see from the fruits of that what he, what he mentioned of uh, the brother not making in a couple of days and getting calls from that which is a commendable act from the congregants uh, therefore strengthening the community and you know helping the individual that they didn't even know at that capacity Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds us at the very end of the chapter of Jumu'ah when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about death he, he mentions Death, when he says after Audhu Billah and Shaitan Rajim, Qul inna al mawta alladhi tafirruna minhu fa innahu mulaqikum. He makes an assurance and a promise, and this is the Quranic worldview as well, that all of us will encounter this time when there is the, as Ibn Qayyim mentions it in his book of Ar-Ruh, Mufaraqat al-Ruh ila al-Jasad, that it is the separation of the spirit of the body, of the soul from the body, of the spirit or the soul from the body. That is the actualization of death. So Allah SWT says, he tells him to tell the people 
in the mot alladhi tafiruna minhu the verily death is, death is that which you fir to fir minhu is that you run away from or escape from fa innahu mulaqikum and verily you are going to approach it and it will certainly overtake you thumma turadduna ila alim al ghaib wa shahada and then you will be returned to him who fully knows what is hidden and what is manifest uh, and then he will tell you what you used to do what you used to do so these three stages subhanallah allah is letting us know that there will be a time when we will leave this earth and that there will be something that will take place when allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we, we will return to him and not only that we will be muhasaboon we will be held accountable for every mithqal adharra for every adam's weight of good and adam's weight of evil but then allah gives us for lack of better words a strategy or he gives us the action plan or he gives us the response to this knowledge the responsibility of this knowledge allah subhanahu one aspect of it he says after that ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu idha nudiya li salati min yawm al jumu'ati fas'u ila dhikri llahi wa dharu al bay' allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says o oh, you who believe believe the message that was just mentioned the verse before when the call of prayer is made on friday hasten to the remembrance of allah and give up trading and this is important because you know we as human beings allah has created us with the natural desires and the hawa if you will but that desire is refined and aligned by the deen of islam by the message of the quran the spirit of the sunnah that is if we try our best to embrace it it beautifies that natural inclination that carnal self if you will the fitra because we are nourished by the sharia so when the call of prayer on friday is there it is for the men particularly to fasa'u ila dhikrillah to rush to the remembrance of allah and to leave off buying and selling although buying and selling is wajib upon the man particularly to provide for his family or for the muslim to provide for their family but there is a time where there is something that is preferable and that is what is so beautiful about the sharia as well is that it prioritizes for you that which is important in your life in general and in specific that is why we have the obligatory prayers the optional prayers the good things to say the bad things to say what to say at a particular time what actions are preferable at certain times this is all within the framework of islam and this is all within the framework of what allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants so then he says after that uh then rush to the remembrance of allah and leave off buying thatikum khayru lakum in kuntum ta'lamun and that is better for you if you but knew Allah is saying this is better for you even though both of them were permissible at time. Then he says fa idha qudiyat as-salatu fantashiru fil ardi wa batagu min fadlillah wa dhkurullaha kathiran la'allakum tuflihun. But when the prayer is ended disperse in the land and seek Allah's bounty and remember Allah is much so that you may prosper. So when the salat is done then continue and and disperse into the earth doing what you did before which was fulfilling a wajib of working and seeking from the fadl of Allah and Allah says wa batagu min fadlillah and seek from the virtues of Allah for what Allah has provided for you for you to use for others and to help others in this transaction and it's beautiful how the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam when he spoke about commerce and buying and selling he said da'u nasa yarzuqu ba'dhum ba'dha he said leave mankind to provide for one another i have this commodity and we can trade for each other and all of this is permissible and it is even obligatory for us to help one another in society and that is what brings the jamaa and strengthens the jamaa in, in in general but then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa idha ra'aw tijaratan aw lahwan infaddu ilayha wa tarakuka qa'ima qul ma 'inda allahi khayrun min al-lahwi wa min at-tijara wallahu khayrur raziqin i will end here the last verse allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and if they were to see no sooner yet no sooner than they saw some trading or amusement they flocked to it and left you standing by yourself what is narrated from this verse is the sabab an nuzul the reason for the revelation that some scholars mention is a hadith actually in sahih muslim by jabir ibn abdullah where he mentioned the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam was giving a khutbah and then the people during the time there was a loss of food and the people were some would say famine the people heard that there was an air that there was a a, a a a a caravan of food coming so when they heard this they all dispersed while the prophet someone was giving the khutbah and there was only 12 people left and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says wa taraku ka qa'ima they left you standing but then allah gives a general qaida a general rule of the sharia that if we abide by it not only in juma but in our lives in our occupations in our studies when it's time to pray when it's time to do good when it's time to leave off that which is permissible for something that which is better allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qul ma 'inda allahi 
خير 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 من اللهو ومن التجارة that what what that which is with Allah is better than frivolous talk من لهو من better than amusement and trading it's better than amusement and trading it's interesting how you use the word لهو because لهو is actually distraction that which takes you away from what what is more beneficial and people usually get distracted because uh they have the inability to deal with emotional discomfort when something is emotionally discom discomforting even though you may know it's better for you you go off to that which distracts you many times so you leave to that which distracts you from that which you know is better this is the messenger of allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam in front of you giving but you leave off to the lahu which is some scholars said the main focus was the trading but around the trading is the lahu the frivolous talk that doesn't have any benefit the bragging all of these things is the lahu the 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 frivolous talk the amusement which surround which is around the trading that's why it says min al-lahwi wa min al-tijara but what is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best that's why allah says wallahu khayrul raziqin he is the best of the providers he is ar razaq and remembering that general rule when it comes to choosing for what allah has given me from my faculties and providing for myself with a job that is halal with the means that is halal but when there is something that the sharia demands of us or recommends for us what do we choose remember one of the beautiful names of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is ar razaq so when reading this and remembering that allah's risk is better than any type of risk rather he is the one that provided you with that risk that you love for so when he legislates for you something know what is better from what is good may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that have took an understanding of the faith to choose what is best best for our souls in this life to be with him in the next inshallah dr Rahman, sheikh amar uh any final words uh sheikh amar you're gonna have to end us off on spoken word inshallah so have i I, I have to actually go but i just want to appreciate this is my first time doing a webinar with Sheikh Abdullah, and I noticed that he he was going like this, which means that he's in his bag. When when a when a Sheikh starts going like this, when he's talking, he's going he's giving you these gestures. That means that <laughs> <laughs> that means that it's a wrap. It's time to go home, ladies and gentlemen. Akim salat. Allah That was a poem. May Allah bless. Uh, a poem. Uh, let's see here. <clears throat> Uh, you know what? This one is uh, this one is uh, inspired by the du'a of Musa alayhi salam. Rabbi inni lima anzalta ilayya min khayrin faqir. So it goes, My Lord, whatever good you bestow on me, I'm in need. And I'm ashamed when so many have less, but I'm fatigued. Did you make me like this? Forever anxious is this greed to want more of what you have, to yearn, to bleed with passions that may consume the very life of me, to call upon you in the morn, to explore you in the eve, to call upon you in the morn, to implore you in the eve. Is my voice familiar to the angels? Have they begun to see? Am I a person unknown? Have these sins made me a voice un a voice unheard, a mute catastrophe? Am I shackled by my sins? Will repentance break me free? And when this sadness is lifted, will you heal my heart? And navigate me through the pain that I could never course or chart and carry me through this all like you did at the start and forgive me for the times that I made us part. Yeah, yeah. I have a good mic. I don't want to drop it. Yeah. All right, so we're going to go ahead and wrap it up, inshallah. It's beautiful, always beautiful to be with you, brothers, mashallah. Um, and we look forward to seeing you all in the future. And, and subhanAllah, Dr. Uthman in particular, I want to, I want to say jazakallah khair because a lot of the work that Yaqeen is, is doing on the back end, Dr. Uthman's responsible for that, alhamdulillah. So we ask Allah to bless you in your department. We ask Allah to bless you, Sheikh Ammar, all the work that you guys are doing. Sheikh Ammar, I forgot to mention to you, but my mom forwarded a Jannah video. And this is the first okay. time that my mom's ever forwarded an English video ever, which means that you've nice. <laughs> you, you've entered into the world of the Sudani Khaltus. So this is uh, you know that's that's Fathun min Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa taala. I grew up. I grew up with the Sudani Khaltus. Mashallah. Well, now you've returned. Alhamdulillah. man. My second mom. Ummi ba'd ummi. Allah bless her. And Allah bless our people in Sudan. 
I mean, uh, of course, we eventually we were Islam was going to do it in the beginning. Um, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless our brothers and sisters in Sudan yeah, and, and give them safety okay, and I mean. protect them from all that harms them and those that seek I mean. to harm them. I mean. And all of the Mustafaqeen, all of those that are uh, being oppressed around the world. I mean. okay. They're in our du'as. Jazakum Allah khairan to all of you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.